Welcome back to On the Record, and I am your host, Dennis Morrison. You probably already knew that, so, but anyways, it's been an interesting day thus far. I have this video all set up to do for you. My friend Gil came over, he brought me a, a platter pack of 78 RPM records, 50 of a minute, all on really offbeat labels, and they're all hoedown music from uh, down, down in Texas and Alabama and those areas. And uh, in the near future, I'm going to do a video with those. Those are awesome, super awesome, um, and I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But today, I have a bit of what I consider to be a mystery, and a mystery is always fun. And the two discs that I'm going to show you today are enigmatic to me, in a sense. I suspect I know what they are, but it's not for certain. Uh, so if you have any ideas yourself, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you all. All right, these records are home recorded discs, uh, home, home cut discs, if you will. They are on aluminum with acetate over it as the recording medium. Now, these say, both records say Presto USA. Um, oddly, this is a hand paint, or yeah, it's a hand painted label. Or I mean, the, the circle's hand painted, so I assume the letters were also but I, I, it's just kind of odd. I looked up Presto Records on the internet, just a cursory search, and I didn't find anything. And I didn't think I would, because I think what I have here <clears throat> is uh, a radio show, or a portion of a, of a musical radio show. And I say that because uh, there's an announcer between a number of, of, the, tra of the different songs on these, two on these two 10 inch discs, and he sounds like a radio announcer. And I don't see any reason that he would be announcing the music on the disc if if it wasn't a radio. So, anyways, I can see the, that I can I can almost believe that these two discs were recorded off radio or direct line in from the little uh, home disc cutter uh, that you could buy. And and actually, these don't look that great, but they play really quite nice. The little introduction I did. That was from one of these, and um, we're going to take a listen to all four sides uh, shortly, and I hope they don't have a copyright problem with them, but if I do, I do. But anyways, as I said, a mystery is always fun, and these are fun records. They were given to me by my friends Bill and Judy over at uh, Records and Tapes Galore here in Saginaw, Michigan. They had an unfortunate set of circumstances over there about a week ago. Or a little over where somebody broke in they're in the downstairs of this very old building here in Saginaw and somebody broke in upstairs broke a sink and left the water running and so it all flooded down into the record store well they've given me oh I bet you close to 500 record albums an equal amount of the 45 45s a lot of 78s um, cassette tapes CDs I mean total altogether there's probably over a thousand pieces plus some vintage electronic equipment that uh, will be featured in a video coming up shortly also so I'm terribly sorry for their loss and the trouble they're having to go through but it was a boon to my collection and uh, one thing I can say about Bill and Judy they are not selfish people in any sense of the word but back to the record okay let's see I said I could find no information uh, Labels hand painted. It, it, the labels were hand painted, but it really rather sloppily. I'm gonna put up a picture, a close up of this. But they spat, had spattered over onto the, uh, uh, in some cases, over onto the actual grooves. Um, but they still play, so that's cool. There is no eject mechanism at the end. They just keep going until you go over and take the stylus or tone arm off from them. So I'm going towards radio show. Now, they feature classical and opera, which includes a, a song called Time on My Hands, which is really good, the Neapolitan Serenade, and Blue Are Her Eyes, sung by Richard Crooks, and with the Fireside Symphony Orchestra. Now, Richard Crooks was an American tenor, a uh, leading singer for the New York uh, Metropolitan Opera, and from 1928 to 1945, he was the host of the Voice of Firestone radio broadcast, which I'm wondering if that's what these are. 
uh, from the voice of Firestone. There is no uh, introduction to, you know, to know from. But Voice of Firestone was originally titled The Firestone Hour, and it debuted on NBC Radio on uh, December 3rd, 1928, and it aired at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday nights for its entire, for its entire run. Um, yeah, it, it, like I said, it ended in 1945, or his hosting it, Richard Crook's hosting it, ended in 1945. It actually went on, I think the program itself ended in 1963, because, and it made a transition in the 50s from radio, which I think was the perfect medium for it, to television, um, whose audio quality back then was, from my memory, not, not the greatest back in 63. But then again, I wasn't very old. So, um, let me know what you think these are. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but not 100%. We're going to take a listen to all four sides. And they play probably a couple minutes per side. So, let's take a listen. And again, uh, thank you for stopping. Love each and every one of you. And, uh, my gosh, there's so many. You know, I was telling you about the records and things that I got from them. And there are, are literally hundreds of of them that would make an excellent um, program in and of themselves. So uh, I don't have to look very far for ideas for quite some time. I wish I, I don't know, can you hear the hammering? I wish I had some idea to stop the noise from outside. The house across the road is doing construction. They're doing work on the road out in front of my house. They're tearing up the sidewalks and redoing those. And it has been a noisy, chaotic mess here. Uh, so if you can hear that in the background, I ask that you please forgive me, but I can't do anything about it. All right, enough of my babbling. Let's go over to my little turntable and take a listen to, the, to Presto USA Records. This record is the only, this side of this record is the only one that has any damage to it. It had glue on here that got really right down into the lab, or into the grooves. I don't know how to take that out. I can't use alcohol or a solvent like that because I'm afraid it would dissolve the acetate of the record. There I am babbling again. I'm sorry. Let's take a listen to this side. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. This is where the glue is in the uh, is in the grooves. So I'm not going to play this all the way through. I'll just play a little bit of it here for you. But uh, that's just a bit too annoying because of the glue in there. All right, here we go with side three. by Richard Crooks. The Firestone Symphony Orchestra, under the direction of Alfred Wallenstein, will now be heard in the Merry Widow Waltzes by Franz Lehar.
it goes off like that with no, uh, you know, eject mechanism. That, uh, to me, the quality for this type of recording is really, is really quite good. And they probably haven't had the best care over the years. Um, so, this is side four. Let's take a listen and see, or hear, what we can hear. See with our ears. Ha ha ha, yes. Well. not hear that last announcement when I listened to this the first time so it clears up a mystery this is the Firestone uh, uh, theater and they are actually um, uh, discs recorded off the uh, off the air so that's kind of cool mystery solved hey 